Welcome back guys. We are talking about the translation or the protein synthesis in prokaryotes. We have seen the first stage that is the initiation phase of protein synthesis, right? We, we have seen the formation of 30s initiation complex and then the formation of 70s initiation complex. Now this was the ultimate stage of first initiation phase. Now we will be talking here about the elongation stage here. So now about the elongation phase of protein synthesis. For the elongation phase to occur, what we require, what we know here is that each of those tRNA will bring one particular specific amino acid in the place of A site because this is the site when a charged tRNA will come and bind. So they will bind here with the A site. Once they are attached with the A site, after this process, second step is the attachment of amino acid with each other via peptide bond that is called the peptidyl transferase activity. That means the amino acid that is present by the previous tRNA will be transferred to the new tRNA, remember. So now after that this third stage will be this ribosome will slide along one codon or three nucleotide from 5 prime towards 3 prime. This is the 3 prime. So it will slide along from 5 prime to 3 prime one codon at a time. And as a result, whatever tRNA present at E site will fall. Whatever tRNA present were in P site will now be on E. Whatever tRNA present on A site will now be on P. And A site will be free again. So can you see just sliding one window? Try to imagine the situation. So now let's begin with it. Let's say the first charged tRNA because the first tRNA was formulated methionine, which is modified. But the first normal tRNA uh, carrying, uh, for normal amino acid carrying tRNA will be different depending upon the codon, whatever codon is present here, depends upon. So let's say whatever codon is there. So for that, let's say there is a tRNA. Let's say there is again, uh, let's say this this green color tRNA now with the codon, with a particular amino acid at the end. Okay. Now tRNA cannot itself come and attach with the A site. They require another energy for this process. And the energy is provided by some factor. They are called elongation factor. And there are two types of elongation factor mainly required. Elongation factor Tu and elongation factor G. So EFTU and EFG. Except that there is another factor called EFS. And the function of EFS, EFS will be talking later, but majorly these two EFTU and EFG, all of this, I mean EFTU and EFG, they are GTPase protein. So they are bound with GTP and they can hydrolyze GTP. So they can provide some energy to this tRNA to carry that uh, amino acid after this GTP hydrolysis. So this tRNA will be attached with EFTU at the beginning. It will bring it and attach it to this A site at the very beginning. So this is the amino acid here. They are now attached there. Remember, they are attached with the codon, whatever codon is present here. So codon anticodon interaction is going on in this here. Okay. And also they have an amino acid right there. Okay. So EFTU is now attached to this particular place. Remember, these are the elongation factor binding region we have told you this is let us say EFTU bound with it with GTP. So upon bringing of this and attaching it with the particular exact codon in the mRNA, GTP gets hydrolyzed of EFTU and EFTU will be released. So the function here they will bring it and put it there and scan for the exact binding of anticodon codon. If the binding is perfect, they will hydrolyze the GTP, put the energy to form the bond between the codon and anticodon, and then the EF2 will fall off. It will be released. So now the EF2 is released. So EF2 works there along with GTP, and when it comes out, it is with GTP. Okay. Now, all the EFTUs that we require for a 
charged TRN to bring, it should have a GTP, but everyone is now having GDP. So from where this EFT is getting the GTP, then this EFS comes in, actually EFTS comes in, right, EFTS. So this EFTS, this particular factor helps in recycling GTP instead of GDP. So this EFTS will provide GTP to EFTU and the GDP that was present in EFTU is released. So if I write it this way, so now, so previously it was having GDP, now the GDP is released, GTP is added by EFTS. So that is the function of EFTS, so regulating the cycle of GTP EFTU and GDP EFTU. So now again this G EFTU is with GTP, so it can again attach with some other TRN and bring that to the place. That is how the cycle continues. So now once we know that the first TRN is now in place in the A, A site, the first stage is done. The second stage of elongation is the formation of peptide bonds between the amino acids. And I have told you that in this formation of bond, the amino acid that is present in the first tRNA will be transferred to the new one. So the FMET tRNA, the FMET amino acid that was present will be transferred onto the head of this upcoming tRNA and now FMET is free from this tRNA, so this tRNA becomes uncharged. This is the second stage. Peptidyl transferase, this is called as transpeptidation reaction, it is carried out by this enzyme peptidyl transferase which is found in the 50S subunit of the ribosome, that is why I have told you most of the important parts played in initiation by 30S ribosomal subunit but most of the parts played in the elongation phase will be by the 50S subunit, right. So the peptidyl transferase enzyme found in the 50S subunit will help to join two amino acids together by peptide bond by the process called transpeptidation. And now we have one uncharged tRNA present in the P site and one charged tRNA having two amino acid now instead of one, I mean one new amino acid is added in the A site. Now the third stage of elongation is the translocation of ribosomal subunits. Remember, I have told you that this ribosomal subunit will now migrate one codon state direction from 5 prime to 3 prime, right. So for this translocation, they need energy and again for energy production, we have EFG, which is again another GTPase protein. So EFG comes in here with the GTP, it will be attached with the uh, elongation factor binding domain in 50S subunit. After the hydrolysis of the GTP of EFG, this ribosomal subunit slide along one codon unit. One codon unit sliding and this GTP is hydrolyzed into GDP plus PI. So, during this process of one codon sliding, what will happen? Try to imagine now. Whatever thing, whatever tRNA, that is the first tRNA present at P site. So as this whole system is moving one codon from 5 to 3 prime forward, so the, the, this, this red tRNA, the first tRNA will be now in the position of E. This new tRNA will be in the position of P but the A position will become free. Why it becomes free now? So that it can attach with another tRNA which carries another amino acid based on the codon that is present. Because remember the codons are placed one after another in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So this ribosome needs to stop for one codon, add that amino acid, then forward one codon. One place again free the A place again free, another amino acid will set in, join, again forward. Again another amino acid is, I mean A site is free, again another tRNA will bring another amino acid, again join the peptide bonds and forward one codon. 
Now you may ask, that is only possible if, so what happens to the old tRNAs, the uncharged tRNAs? Once the uncharged tRNA is present in E site, after the translocation, all of those uncharged tRNA will be released from E site. Will be fall, it will fall off from the E site. That's why the E site is named. E site means exit site. It's named as exit site here. So the tRNA will be exited from this E site there, right? So, so as you know this, so how can we see now this thing right now? So this, so this red as well as blue, let me erase this a little bit. So now, this tRNA is present here, uncharged. This tRNA with two amino acids present at the P side. And the A side is now free after the translocation, right? So after that, again, so GDP was released, remember? So again, what will happen? EFTU will bring in another tRNA to the place of A. So let's say another tRNA is brought in here based on the codon pairing with another amino acid. First stage of initiation, EFTU hydrolyzing the GTP and bringing it here. EFTU is released, cycling by EFTS so that it can process this again. After that, EFG will come in. EFG mean, oh, not EFG, the second stage of initial elongation will be the transpeptidization. That means with the help of peptidyl transferase, again, these two amino acids will be now added with this one. So, if I see it here, it will be transferred here, it will be released and the amino acid containing tRNA in the P side will be again uncharged, right. Peptidyl transferase activity. After that, EFG will comes in with GTP, hydrolyzing the GTP, helps in the translocation of ribosomal subunits, one codon unit from 5 prime to 3 prime. As a result, what will happen? This with 3 amino acid will be now in P site. This green one will be now in E site, and this red one will fall off. So, what we will see here is this first tRNA that we begin with will now fall off. Instead of this, in the E site, we have now this green one and in the P site, we have this one because we are sliding one codon apart. And this and what we know that A site is free, right? Why A site is free? So that they can interact with another tRNA. So that's how. Again, a new tRNA will come in. Remember, new tRNA will come in here. Again, who will bring it? EFTU will bring it with another amino acid there, right? Second stage, peptidyl transferase activity third stage translocation and and this process will go on through this elongation stage right until and unless they reach what is called a stop codon so once they will reach this stop codon during this process and remember once this ribosome is moving on the stop codon is is really coming closer because why because this ribosome is moving so stop codon will now come closer right so once they reach the stop codon there the elongation will be stopped and then the termination process will begin. Now one question is remaining which I have not answered here that is how this peptidyl transferase reaction actually works. The idea was that there are two peptides, there, there are two amino acids present there, right. The interaction here, one amino acid is having the amino group, an amino group attacks the carbonyl carbon of another amino acid. As a result, both two amino acids are joined. I am not talking about exact chemical reaction here, but the amino group of the, the amino group of this new amino acid here will attack the carbonyl group of the previous amino acid and as a result they can form this bond that is catalyzed by peptidyl transferase enzyme. 
Okay, so this in a sense is the elongation of protein synthesis. In the future video, last video we will be talking about the termination of protein synthesis.